So if we could talk a bit about uh, your current research, uh, or I, I guess it's a piece of your current, the, the paper that you recently released. Um, so the, the paper was uh, genome-wide CRISPR screens reveal multi-tiered mechanisms through which mTORC1 senses mitochondrial dysfunction, right? Um, and then you tweeted about that paper. Um, so the paper says mitochondrial stress, talked about, but I thought the I think the paper was kind of wider and it was looking generally, you were generally looking at what the upstream, trying to be systematic about finding all the upstream um, in, things that impact mTOR. So could you just talk right. about the, the paper and um, what the outcome was? Sure. You know, in, in all uh, sort of scientific publications, you always have to have some focus of something. And, and we decided to focus there on, on mitochondrial function. So what we did is we used this technology, which again, I'm sure your listeners are aware of CRISPR-based uh, genome editing, obviously a winner of the Nobel Prize this year in chemistry. And, and we use that to interrogate the function of most genes, uh, how when we knock out those genes, how they impact mTORC1 activity in a human cell in culture. So that's the caveat, right? It's one human cell in culture under one set of conditions. Mm -hmm. And we identified many of the players that we thought we would, right? Um, certainly all the components of the pathway that we had identified biochemically. We also identified a whole bunch of other genes that seem to impact mTORC1 activity. Uh, and the vast majority of those, we don't know how. Right. Some of them may turn out to be interesting in the future. Some may not. Some may have trivial explanations. For example, we make the cell too sick, right? And the cell is simply not functioning well, doesn't have enough ATP, and therefore mTORC1 is inhibited. But we did pursue some of them. And as you mentioned, we did, we did look into particularly how mitochondria um, regulate mTORC1. And as you know, right, mitochondria are the organelles in, in our cells. Um, this is, uh, you know, a, probably a bacterium that got into our cells early on in the evolution of eukaryotes and stayed and its genome got you know, pared down and it became really one of the major metabolic organelles in, in our cells and, and famous for ATP production, right? People call it the powerhouse of the cell. It does many more things than, than ATP production. And we've known for a long period of time that if we use inhibitors of mTORC1, uh, sorry, of mitochondria, mTORC1 becomes inhibited. Um, and, and this is you know, not only us, many people have, have done these experiments. And there have been many proposed uh, mechanisms, right? And what the answer turns out to be when we now look kind of with a bird's eye view, having a large data set and then looking at everything that's been out there and doing, you know, I, I would say more conclusive type experiments by really knocking out many of these regula potential regulators and knocking them out in combination, that turns out to be key is that many, many, mitochondria can, can talk to mTORC1 in many ways. And, and we really identified two major pathways. One is the AMP mm -hmm. uh, sensing kinase, AMPK, which I'm sure you have probably talked about here as well, the, the target of metformin, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of the anti-diabetic drug ultimately activates AMP kinase. And then a kinase that's less studied called HRI. Um, this is a kinase that recently has been shown to respond to mitochondrial function. And what we argue in this paper is that both of those kinases, the activation of both of them is necessary for mTORC1 to sense mitochondrial dysfunction with AMP kinase acting early. And sort of AMP kinase is kind of like the, the early alarm. If AMP kinase can deal with that stress, then you don't activate that later stress. But if the stress continues, then you activate the HRI stress. And so uh, mTORC1 activity is almost biphasically regulated by mitochondrial function one phase by AMP kinase, the other one by HRI. So that, that's the gist of that paper. And, and we obviously established a little bit more how those actually work. Right. Yes, I, it was. So, so do you feel where, I mean, that's a, that's a big step forward in, in understanding how mTOR is regulated? That we, yeah. Okay. I, I think, you know, for, for us, it's, it, it provides clarity uh, hmm. to to what I would say is a little bit of a, unclear literature in the sense that there's so many things that have been argued to be able to regulate mTORC1 from mitochondria. I think at least in the system that we've looked at, it helps establish what matters in that particular system and hopefully in others as well. Right. So could I ask, you know, what's the next step in the kind of investigation of this? So just further detail on the, on, on sure. the regulators? 
Yeah. So I think the, uh, what, you know, mitochondria, as I, as I said before, do many things, right? And, and what we perturbed mostly in this paper is the capacity of mitochondria to make ATP, right? And, and that has other consequences on the mitochondria. So I think what we need to now really understand and what we're doing is asking, what if we perturb other specific functions? Do mitochondria communicate with mTOR through the same pathways? Or are there new pathways that get used? We don't have the answer to that yet. Right. And then this would presumably give us another way to restrict or downregulate mTOR if we could. But potentially, right? But I, I don't think too many people will want to use some of the inhibitors that we're using. We're using pretty you know big gun inhibitors to perturb mitochondria. You could say metformin, right? People have shown that metformin impacts uh, mTOR1. Um, so in a way, metformin is acting through probably through some of the pathways we describe here. Right. Excellent. Yes. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.